Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Which one of us can it be? Who is the traitor? He says that even among us, the chosen twelve, there is a traitor. And now he speaks of a betrayal before night's end. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Can one of our numbers be so blind? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? It's unthinkable. Who could it be? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Why should one of us do such a thing? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? I find it so hard to believe that one of us will betray the Lord is one of God. Surely the betrayer is out of his mind. He refuses to make a move. Well, I've made one. Well, good evening and welcome to First Baptist Church of Springfield. Um, this is a special service uh, where we will uh, join in the celebration of uh, Christ instituting the Lord's Supper and try to put ourselves inside the gospel narrative of John leading up to Easter. Um, I'd invite you to stand with us first and we'll raise our voices to him as we celebrate the full revelation of the mystery of Christ. Come behold the wondrous mystery In the dawning of the King He the theme of heaven's praises Robed in frail humanity In our longing, in our darkness Now the light of life has come Look to Christ who condescended, took on flesh to ransom us. Come behold the wondrous mystery, He the perfect Son of Man, in His living suffering, never trace nor stain of sin. See the true and better Adam come to save the hell-bound man. Christ the great and sure fulfillment of the law in him we stand. mystery, Christ the Lord upon the tree. In the stead of ruined sinners hangs the Lamb in victory. See the price of our redemption, see the Father's plan
Listen to these words from John 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from the God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist, and he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, what I am doing, you do not now understand, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, the one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I've given you an example that you should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I'm not speaking to all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I'm telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I receive, the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. And one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter motioned to him to ask of Jesus whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Iscariot. After he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what are you doing? What you are doing, do quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. So some thought, because Jesus had the mo- Judas had the money bag that Jesus was telling him, buy what we need for the feast, or that he should give him something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify in him, in himself, and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while, I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now also I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I'm going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me afterwards. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. Peter promises his unbound loyalty to the Lord. And yet, Peter denies that very same Lord. Peter promises, Lord, I'll lay down my life, and yet later he denies Christ. And Christ is gathered here in this upper room with his disciples, partaking of a feast, eating together, reclining at the table, 
talking with them, participating together with them. With one who would dip his bread in the cup and would literally betray Christ. With another, sharing a meal with one that would deny Christ. As we read through the Gospel of John, we've noted how Jesus' time was not yet there, but now it's coming. Now it's coming, and he knows his betrayer. He knows who will deny him. And yet he willingly allows himself to go to the cross. In one sense, it is Peter's denial that is that reminder of sin that we all need. That there are times and places where we have denied the rightful lordship of Christ, his mastery over every area of our life, and yet Christ died for Peter. But there's another sense in which, just as we are Barabbas who Christ died in place of, that it is our sin that put him there, his love for us that willingly sacrificed himself for us. So in one sense, we are also much like Judas. It is our sin that put him there. In the moments that come, I'm going to ask you in a few moments to come forward, grab a piece of the bread, to dip it into the cup, then to consume it in front of the table as a reminder that it is your sin, your participation in the death of Christ, it also brings your participation in the resurrection in Christ of Christ. As we say in baptism, buried in the waters of baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. I'll ask you in just a moment or two, after I step down, you're welcome to fill either aisle. I'm going to serve the band, the worship team on stage, then I'll bring a plate back. Come forward, grab a piece of bread, reflecting on your sin that led to the cross, on his love poured out for you, on your participation with him in his death and his resurrection. Having done that, you're welcome to return to your seat. We'll sing a hymn in a few moments celebrating the Father's love for us. When ready, you may make your way forward.
Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing loss, the Father turns His face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulders Ashamed I hear my mocking voice Call out among the scoffers It was my sin that held him there Until it was accomplished His dying breath has brought me life I know that it is sin in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but this I will in Jesus Christ his death and resurrection why should I gain from his reward I cannot give an answer but this I know John 14, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. That's where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Would you stand? Let's sing of those great works together. And 
everyone was made so we could see so we could see you are the glorious Christ the greatest of all delights your power is unequal your love beyond all heights no greater sacrifice than when you lay down your life you join the song of angels who praise you day and night glorious Christ you left the air of heaven the dust of earth and dwell among the outcasts and the poor you came to be forsaken and die to take our curse so you could be our joy forevermore forevermore you are the glorious Christ the greatest of all delights your power is unequal your love beyond all heights no greater sacrifice Continuing in John 14 at verse 12. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, 
How is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I'm going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I've told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. Would you stand with us? Let's celebrate the helper that has come to us. <laughs> Clear for 
seated. Continuing in John chapter 15. I am the true vine, and my Father is the wine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Uh, By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whether you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. Let's stand, let's celebrate this great love we've received through which we can love one another. Speak. 
choose to lose my life, Lord, and find it in you. I choose to lose my life, Lord, and find it in you. I choose to lose my life, Lord, and find it in you. I choose to lose my life, Lord, and find it in you. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin, but now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. I've said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming whenever who kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I've said these things to you that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment, concerning sin because they do not believe in me, concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. But you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. 
Would you stand and let's bear witness to the truth of Christ together and declare it to one another. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are stilled when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid, here in the death of Christ I live. body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, out from the grave he rose again. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me. And again a little while and you will see me. And because I'm going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he's talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, Is this what you're asking yourselves? What I meant by saying a little while and you will not see me? And again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come, but when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but I will see you again, 
and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And as we pray together to close this service, may I remind you of that next to the last verse that I read. Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet, I am not alone. Heavenly Father, sometimes we want to jump to the joy of Easter without recognizing the price that our Lord Jesus Christ has paid for us. And as he foretold that night, there was a long night coming when there would be great struggles. In fact, he would sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. And yet, the end of that struggle was not my will, but thine be done, he said to the Father. And something that had not occurred in the millions of millenniums, the Father turned his back on the Son because the Son was willing to take my sin on himself. Father, I ask that in these next hours, as we consider the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on our behalf, that you would do a deep work in our heart, Lord, that we might acknowledge the depth of our depravity and the great price that you paid to bring us Easter Sunday. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Even though we have turned our backs and will no doubt turn our back again, God, help us, strengthen us, renew us by your Spirit that we might understand something of the price that was paid for our sin. And as you accomplish that work in our hearts, be glorified in our lives. In his holy name we ask it.